Welcome back at Sugar Zone Podcast. This time we are in Italy, our country. Craft chocolate is everywhere and sure it is also in Italy. In this episode, we are in Sicily at Molica, where there is a great number of chocolate makers that make and sell their special chocolate. One of the historical is Antica Dolceria Bonaiuto and uh, Pierpaolo Ruta is the sixth generation owner of this wonderful company. Today we are with him and we are really very happy to tell one important history of a part of craft chocolate in Italy. Italy is a special country for food, uh, for wine, uh, for a lot of specialities uh, with, with food. We, we have also here a good chocolate, you know, and we have also a particular one that is uh, typical of a region, Sicily, and of uh, a wonderful town like Modica. Um, there, we are meeting our guest. Per Paolo Ruta, owner of the really famous uh, Antica Dolceria Bonaiuto. Hello, hello Per Paolo. Hello. Hi, thank you hi, for asking. Hi, 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 hi. I am back. Um, normally, uh, we, we ask to all our guests to, of our podcast to introduce themselves, but in this case, I think that before it's important that you help us uh, uh, to introduce your wonderful uh, town of Modica, the Sicily, and also the particular chocolate that uh, is something special, well known all over the world, and uh, that you, you make uh, for a long, long time. So please, tell us about Modica. Yes, Modica is uh, a little town in the southeast of Sicily. And uh, here we have uh, a, a chocolate tradition. It's so strange because temperatures, high temperatures here in Sicily. But uh, Modica was a Spanish county. So our town was a Spanish county during the 16th century. And here arrived uh, uh, chocolate uh, uh, worked uh, in uh, in a cold in, a, in an old way no yeah with, with an old method mm-hmm. so uh, imagine that my grandfather until 1960 worked uh, grinding the cocoa seeds uh, with the stone with the metate that yeah. is uh, yeah. usually is uh, from south america Mm-hmm. Then uh, Spanish people learned this way to grind uh, the, 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 the cocoa seeds the cocoa. This kind of, uh, of stones. And uh, this kind of chocolate arrived the year in Modica and arrived uh, not only for rich people. This is very, uh, very interesting because for, for, for us, uh, chocolate was not only something... Uh, sweet for rich people, it was very popular, and uh, it is a food, so something uh, that could give you bright energy during the day, and uh, often uh, uh, made uh, at home, uh, so many grandmothers here use it to make chocolate uh, like South American style. But it's very interesting because uh, everything, every kind of sweets has uh, is our history here. Yeah. And uh, yeah. it's very interesting to, to look for the roots of this kind of... Uh, okay. And uh, Pierpaolo, uh, on the other side, which is your history as a chocolate maker? When you entered Antica Dolceria Bonaiuto, what is your background? I mean, w- w- uh, building up a kind of uh, such a famous, you know, chocolate company, which is the secret? I mean, w- w- what you brought into this company? <laughs> yes, for sure. Uh, it, it was not so simple for me choosing uh, another, another kind of life okay. because I'm the sixth generation of this family. 
the surname has changed because uh, Francesco Bonaiuto uh, the, the, was the founder, was the father of my grandmother, mm -hmm. the mother of my grandfather, no, of my father. That's why the surname has changed. But they started now, we, don't, we know that they started to make sweets and chocolate uh, uh, from uh, the, the last documents we found, the oldest documents we found is dated uh, 1854 wow. and uh, is uh, the last will of the grandfather of Francesco, of the founder, uh, left in uh, his uh, fattoio to mm -hmm. his son. And uh, we, we, we researched the, the, the roots of, uh, for, for this kind of words. Fattoio was a physical place where the cocoa beans were uh, grinded with the stones. Okay. And that's why we reopened Fattoio uh, about three years ago. That is our little bean-to-bar space. Yeah. But uh, f for sure, I, I grew up uh, here at the Dolce here uh, with my with my grandfather, and uh, I always say that uh, I still uh, producing chocolate because it, uh, it is the smell of my grandfather. Okay. So it's such emotional. Uh, it's very interesting for me because. Uh, uh, when, when I was uh, a child, uh, I was here experimenting, uh, uh, trying uh, several kinds uh, of, uh, of chocolates. Uh, but I, I grew up with industrial chocolates. So, yeah, yeah. as everybody, like all our generation, with the two, two, two ways: uh, the chocolate of my grandfather and the industrial chocolate. And um, this is very interesting for me because uh, everything started uh, deconstructing the history of this kind of chocolate. Mm -hmm. and it was very, very important for me. I then started to study communication. Then, uh, unfortunately, my, my grandfather passed in 1992. And uh, with my father, Franco, uh, we decided to to return to the origin, because uh, uh, during the Second World War they they inserted the, the bar because the sugar were, was given to only if uh, you had the chains uh, to make coffee in your place. So yeah. they inserted the, the bar and um, ice cream making and many of the original sweets uh, were disappearing. So. We, we decided that we choose it to return to the original formula and uh, to deconstruct uh, the history of every kind of sweets uh, were produced here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Finding very, um, very Paolo, with, the, with your company, we can say about the history, the sixth generation. Uh, but uh, we we must also to, to to tell something about your father i think because uh, i think that um, not only your company but also modica chocolate with him uh, become more international more famous more uh, strong uh, started to have uh, a special identity then a lot of other people started also in Modica to, to follow uh, this, um, this way to do. But um, tell us also about your father. I think it is a must in this episode. Yes, Franco Ruta, uh, that was my father that passed, uh, unfortunately, in uh, tw 2016, about five years ago. And um, he was a dreamer. Yeah. A, a, a complete crazy dreamer and uh, he <laughs> discovered uh, the roots of the for sure of this kind of chocolate but his dream was to talk uh, uh, to talk about uh, Sicily this area, this area of Sicily this town using uh, a bar a chocolate bar as a medium. So he, he, 
in the, 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 his entire life uh, uh, for spreading the gospel, <laughs> mm -hmm. spreading the gospel all around Italy and all around the world, uh, demonstrating that uh, in a little place in Sicily, there were a little chain, uh, a, a little uh, ring of, of, of a chain of, of the history of chocolate that uh, was lucky because never passed to the industrial, uh, to the industrial uh, form or to the industrial phase. Yeah. And uh, he, he always said uh, that, well, you, you make the, the history of chocolate, uh, we are the prehistory, and we are not chocolate master, no, we are not uh, uh, master chocolatier, we are only a witness of, of this kind of history that uh, was preserved here only for geographic marginal, marginalization, nothing yeah. else. Uh, maintaining uh, it uh, uh, pure with a very short label, and um, and, and my father, uh, yes, uh, he lived for spreading the gospel uh, all over the world. Sometimes uh, he departed uh, only with ten uh, bars and uh, in his pocket and nothing else uh, <laughs> for for making. Uh, Paintings, uh, degustation, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the first paintings, uh, trying paintings with wines, uh, every kind of uh, uh, not virus contamination, but sure. uh, contamination in, in, in every kind of arts, uh, um, and and uh, it was a it was a a, a great talker so. Um, uh, Great talker, but also humble. Uh, he, he, yeah, he, he never. Uh, yeah, I remember I met him uh, when I was uh, young, uh, and uh, we talked about chocolate, and uh, he knew a lot of little secrets, but uh, he he spread in a normal way. Normally, when you talk with uh, somebody that uh, wore chocolate normally also industrial chocolate, they say to you a lot of words, but exactly you don't understand. With him, I, it was different, yeah. Humble, but uh, well, he, he know well the, the matter, and uh, it was easy to, to understand, yeah. Uh, I, I was thinking uh, today about uh, uh, the contacts uh, between uh, uh, FBM and Bona Yuta, no? Yeah. And uh, I remember that, that my father buy the, 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 the first uh, tempering sure. machine. It was 1997. I can say you the <laughs> remember that. So Pierpaolo, what does it mean that among uh, all the features, the peculiarities of the chocolate, the Modican chocolate must be tempered or must not be tempered? Uh, imagine that... Uh, uh, you, pro, you, you were producing chocolate uh, until uh, the, 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 the first of last century, using it only for making uh, hot chocolate uh, or grinding with ricotta cheese or okay. grinding it uh, on food and so on. So it was untempered, but uh, it was untempered because uh, it was not so important to have something beautiful to see. Yeah. But something that could be give you uh, that energy that we were talking about, and uh, the, 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 the were not market for this kind of chocolate. So it's, uh, it's like a South American producer that uh, still produce with mortar or metate and sells the, the piece of chocolate or the bolas uh, uh, in the local market. It was not so important to yeah. temper the chocolate. Now we are in a new, uh, in a new way, in a new deal, in a new world. <laughs> yeah. In the world of chocolate. Yeah. And uh, and for us is is right now to to temper because I always said I always said that uh, uh, the tradition is uh, 
not something that fixed. Yeah. And um, my father always uh, uh, repeat, uh, repeated that uh, in tradition was only a, 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 a starting a point. Uh, experiments, nothing else, no? Tell us about the chocolate. How do you make it in your factory? So we can understand better. Uh, it, 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 it still change. It still change because uh, mostly the, the, the big differences between uh, normal chocolate and this kind of chocolate are very similar to bean to bar movement now, no? Because uh, it's a chocolate only made with cocoa mass and sugar. And uh, I know that uh, our experiments and your experiments on our, on, on our chocolate were important for, for you, for... Sure. For, 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 uh, pointing uh, and uh, uh, improving your technology in being the bar into the bean bar uh, is uh, so strange. So mostly uh, cocoa mass and sugar, uh, usually several kind of spices. Uh, here chocolate was uh, arrived uh, spiced with uh, uh, cinnamon or vanilla. We we cold process chocolate. Mm -hmm. So we add the sugar at the last, and uh, the sugar remains in grain, never passes uh, uh, to dissolve this kind of chocolate uh, in, as a normal chocolate. And uh, um, that was uh, uh, because uh, we, we were we were not able to use the technology. My grandfather, when chocolate became something for uh, something other, they, um, they added more fat, they added uh, cocoa butter, they added uh, soy lecithin and so on, uh, uh, he, he wasn't able to use the technology for, 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 for normal chocolate. Sure. And that's why that kind of chocolate remained uh, handmade, shaken by hand, uh, handmade, with this kind of uh, grainy texture that is, uh, many, many customers think that uh, this kind of texture is uh, something that uh, uh, was born like this. But, uh, uh, Sugar, sugar in grains uh, 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 was born uh, during the Second World War. Mm -hmm. So, as my grandfather um, re received uh, little pieces of sugar, pasting uh, on the mortar for having the, the, the powder of sugar. Yeah. So, perhaps yeah. uh, the texture of our chocolate that is now well known because it's grainy in the mouth and so on, where you know, was not so the, the same. Yeah. And this, this is the other peculiarity of the Modican chocolate. So you don't refine completely sugar. The question is, uh, is the only way to do the Modican chocolate or you can refine in a different rate the sugar it's, it's up to different company or different chocolate or different flavors. Why you choose to refine up to a certain point and stopped uh, before or, or completely refine it? Which is the idea behind it? Well, I, I think that we are still alive because we never stop to experiments. And, like, uh, like everybody, believe me. <laughs> Yeah. So, for example, we, we started with a, a more grainy sugar and now we, we work with several kinds of percent, uh, we work with several kinds of spices, we can choose to refine more uh, the, the, the kind of, uh, of, uh, of chocolate, uh, but we, we can even choose to use uh, several kind of uh, sugars, because mm -hmm. uh, even the sugar is very important in yeah. uh, the chocolate. So, uh, with the uh, with the bean to bar, because we have two two kinds of line. One uh -huh. is uh, 
the, the preta porter that is on my back. Yeah. Okay. The the craft chocolate, the real craft chocolate. Yeah. The the, the, the preta we for the preta porter we 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 buy cocoa mass. Uh -huh. so we, we 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 melt cocoa mass in sugar and then we uh, we produce uh, chocolate. our chocolate. And then we have uh, a, a sort of uh, high culture that is our bean to bar yeah. uh, that uh, that allows uh, allow us to to work uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, with several origins uh, with with uh, several yeah. kinds of experience. So we we can say that the also in Modica, uh, so the chocolate is changing all over the world and it is going to be a sort of uh, identity like the wine. Um, there is the commercial, the craft, the single or a special origin. There are the, the, the blend. Mm, the same is thing is now for, for chocolate, thanks to bean to bar. Uh, when and uh, where do you discover the bean to bar? So that you started at one point. Yes, uh, you know the, 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 this kind of discussion about wines uh, very was very interesting for us to explain, uh, for example, in the last year why we chose it, uh, for example, to produce uh, chocolate with African cocoa. Uh, usually, in, in the in the chocolate market, uh, uh, if you see, I I, I use African cocoa. They, they always say, it's the worst cocoa in the world. <laughs> and uh, we have a particular grape here in Sicily that is named the Nero Davola. Mm -hmm. the, the, the same history. Until 30 years ago, that grape uh, was used only to cut other wines, but only because it was never respected. Yeah. And uh, for us, it was very important to explain uh, why this kind of masculine uh, uh, cocoa, perhaps uh, not so elegant, uh, perhaps uh, not so interesting uh, for uh, yeah. it is not so fruity uh, flower. Yeah. Yeah. What was very important for us for explaining this kind of technique, and um, for sure now. Uh, you, you asked me wh when I discovered bean to bar. Uh, in uh, bean to bar, uh, Bon Aiuto started bean to bar with the metate. Then, uh, at, 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 a certain, at a certain time, uh, they were not able to, 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 to buy the, 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 the cocoa beans. And my grandfather passed to use uh, cocoa mass. Because yeah. it was not not very simple to, to buy a, a single yeah. sack of cocoa beans uh, uh, and so on. Then with the net, uh, it was m m more simple for, for, sure. for everyone. And then, for example, uh, I, I, I started to be curious about the, the cocoa, about the raw material. Uh, I, I the, the first plantation I visited uh, was in Africa, and, uh, in Sao Tome Principe, with Claudio Corallo. Yeah. They teach me many, many, many interesting things. And then I started to 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 to, to have the um, to, to to go all around the world to to, to see what are what to look for the differences. Uh, to look for uh, the, the way to think about chocolate and so on. So I visited uh, Ecuador, then uh, Colombia, then uh, Venezuela, and then I met Maria Fernanda Di Jacob, uh, that is uh, uh, yeah. for me a big light in the chocolate world. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, we, we met uh, first in Venezuela, then uh, she came in Modica, and and then, uh, for sure, now it's very, very simple to, to, to have uh, uh, meetings uh, with uh, chocolatiers of other, of other countries uh, for, uh, to, to, to meet uh, the planters, uh, uh, to discuss about cocoa. So it, it is uh, very interesting for us not to, 
to see to say we are master chocolatier but uh, yeah. we want to learn every day about chocolate about cocoa about our chocolate and uh, Pierpaolo between your two different lines so we can say that you have the, the lines with the inclusion with spicy but you can play also with the different origins okay so from different countries uh, which are your best selling products including all these uh, production that you have it depends uh, um, we have uh, for example uh, the, the, the bars with inclusion uh, in um, and, uh, and uh, when someone uh, come to visit Sicily, for example, uh, orange, uh, lemon, uh, tangerine, uh, pistachio, uh, inside their imagination. So yeah. it's very yeah. simple to, to, to sell that kind of chocolate. Then we have, uh, for example, uh, uh, customers that could be a winery or a restaurant and, and uh, you play more with uh, several kinds of sugar, the muscovado one or the panela one or the 8% with salt that uh, is often used for for sure. baking you know yeah. and then it depends because um, uh, about the origins uh, it depends because uh, we often uh, uh, we play to transfer the the emotion so uh, <laughs> there are weeks uh, uh, that uh, I never stopped to, to, to talk about Venezuela and Chihuahua, for example, <laughs> and that week uh, have something uh, that, uh, that, 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 that in that week uh, you, 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 you sell more Venezuelan cocoa or from Peru and so on. So it depends. Uh, and this yeah. um, I I know that your company is a, a kitchen in which the sperma are really special. And when I visited your company, I was astonished when I saw the system you, you have taken from Francesco Redi, historical founder of uh, the biology, and uh, explain to us in which way, without inclusions, you make <laughs> the, 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 I don't know, this miracle of, uh, of chocolate. These little pieces, yeah, yeah. It is an incredible process. Uh, we we know about that process of uh, uh, discovered from Francesco Redi for Cosimo Terzo de Medici for perfuming the cocoa beans with the jasmine flower. So every day Francesco Redi uh, took uh, jasmine flower. And uh, put put the uh, putting on uh, the cocoa beans for several days, and uh, at the end of the process, uh, you put away the flowers, and uh, the cocoa butter absorb everything about the the the, 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 the perfumes of uh, of this kind of uh, of this kind of process, and then grinding the seeds, uh, you obtain an incredible. Uh, kind of chocolate, incredible, not because we are uh, master chocolate here, but uh, you well, are new to not you are new to not using the essence, but using absence. It's incredible uh, for, for, for this right. matter uh, because uh, the, the cocoa butter uh, still uh, everything about the the perfume of the. Uh, the, 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 the the flowers and then we 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 started to experiment with, with this kind of techniques uh, building uh, something for for, 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 uh, for the air for passing the, of the air and so on so then we tried it with the lemon peel for example uh -huh. uh, and you have uh, a chocolate that is, that is only made uh, with the uh, cocoa mass, sugar, and, and perfume. It is not an ingredient, but there is. <laughs> is, an, is uh, without uh, without <laughs> the ingredient. Miracle. Pier Paolo, uh, we normally mention the relationship between the chocolate makers, the uh, crafters, with the farmers, okay? Because we think that the bean to bar movement brought 
some sort of new attitude and approach, okay, some sort of equity, okay, between the, the chocolate maker that pay to the farmers their cocoa beans. But with you, I would like to uh, adjust a little the question. Do you think that also the consumer, so your consumer, the one that buy your chocolate are ready to uh, accept this new equity relationship with the farmers? Because now, because of your story, Tenley, we know where the cocoa bean comes from. You know, we know the relationship that the chocolate maker does have with the, the farmers. Do you know we are ready as a consumers also to accept and maybe to pay more for this kind of product because it's included this sort of new approach with the, with the farmers? Uh, first of all, thank you for, for this kind of question because uh, it's, uh, it's very interesting for me um, because uh, for sure I, I know that uh, there are many problems in, uh, in the countries, uh, in the producing countries and in the plantation and the farmers and so on, but uh, I've, uh, I've had uh, um, even some distributors, for example, that say, oh, you, no, you, you buy cocoa mass from, uh, from uh, an industry and uh, uh, it is not ethical correct. Uh, and so I prefer to stop the relation with you. Uh, I think that uh, we have to uh, to teach every day to our customers what are the differences, and to talk and to explain and to uh, to 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 to, uh, to, to th educate. Yeah, to educate yeah. is very very important. I don't think that uh, from uh, today to tomorrow we can stop everything because sure. we if we stop uh, there are there are people that sell to the to, to, to the, the industries of cocoa yeah. and they 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 own cocoa and yeah. uh, uh, we we kill that kind of people sure. and uh, i love to explain it is a, an incredible word it is not so simple as the the wine word because is perhaps the wine world is richer, is uh, more simple to reach, and uh, is more simple to explain. Yeah. You you can pay more and so on, and that's why we decided to uh, to, to to make uh, experiential tours in our uh, bean to bar uh, lab mm -hmm. because it is for simple at the end of the tour. To sell a chocolate bar that uh, uh, that is more expensive, as perhaps uh, you, you 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 pay double uh, that bar than the normal one because it brings more value. Yeah, yeah. Sure. we we have quite finished our our um, episode, and uh, like to everybody, I say the, the the same question: How do you see your company in 2030? And uh, how do you see also uh, the Modica chocolate with bean to bar in the world within the next 10 years? Yes. Yes, yeah, uh, I, I first uh, answer the, 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 the last part of the questions. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's so strange because, uh, uh, as you know, uh, about uh, three years ago, uh, the, definition, the definition Chocolato di Modica yeah. Uh, obtained uh, the PGI certification, mm. EGP in Italian, that yeah. is a sort of certification of United of uh, European Union. Yeah. And we decided not to apply this kind of certification, of certification to our chocolate. That's because the identity, the identity card that was built, built the about this kind of chocolate, uh, in my opinion, was not the right history. So we cannot say to the world that this kind of chocolate was born here in Modica. Uh -huh. and, uh, it's quite offensive <laughs> for me. And uh, we decided uh, to talk about a, a kind of a Sicilian chocolate. Okay. Uh, about our future, uh, future, I, I, I think that uh, 
my, my, my wish is uh, not to forget the roots, not forget the tradition, but uh, uh, the most important uh, thing for us is a continuing contamination with several kinds of products, with several kinds of people, with several kinds of arts, with several kinds of technology for sure. Imagine that uh, we, we were one of the first company uh, that tried to print their chocolate in 3D way uh, uh -huh. and so on. Uh, um, trying to, to respect the raw material, that is very, very, the, the most important thing for us. Uh -huh. And uh, I always think that uh, uh, difference is richness. So, uh, it's very important matter about uh, us, uh, uh, about our chocolate. So, continue to produce uh, with the same philosophy, but with new contamination, with new emotion, with new flavors, uh, and so on. Uh, uh, to our so. future. Uh, I, um, I, I suggest to all the chocolate uh, lovers, to, to take the airplane soon, to go in, uh, in Modica and to visit Antica Dolceria Bonaiuto, that it is uh, a little uh, shop, but it is uh, special, really. really. And, it's a, and it is a very peculiar chocolate. I mean, sure. you cannot find it any part of the world. Well, I got aware that maybe in Spain, in some small town, you can find something similar. But it are only these two places in the world. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.